Hello, this is Kate with Paint It Kate, and today we are gonna be painting this cute brown puppy on canvas. I usually teach this one as a mom and me, so if you would like to grab your mom, it makes a really cute canvas pair. Just make sure when you guys are painting side by side that the mother's um, head is higher on the canvas than the little baby puppies. The materials we're gonna to need today are an 11 by 14 canvas, Unless you don't have a canvas on hand, you can always do this on paper and just use what you have. You can use crayons, you can use markers, but if you're gonna paint with us today, I use acrylic paint for my canvas paintings. I always use red, yellow, and blue, the primary colors, and we mix our own colors from there. I also have white and black to make our colors lighter and darker. And for this particular painting, I am going to use some browns. I, I buy Artist Loft brand Burnt Umber, and Burnt Sienna. Those are the two browns I'm gonna be using for this painting. The other things that you're gonna to need to have on hand are a paper towel, a water cup to wash your brushes, some paint brushes. I usually like to have a big brush and a couple smaller brushes, and a pencil, eraser, and Sharpie. Let's get started. All right, so we're gonna start with pencil and do a curve for the dog's head. Then we're gonna come straight down to do the snout. Here's the mouth, go straight up to the top of the head and draw a little chin. Now we're ready for the round nose, two eyes. And then we're gonna give this puppy some fluffy long ears. All right, after you're done with these ears, we are ready for the body, a curve down to the left. Here's his paw, and here's his second paw, back up to the chin. And this is actually the back paw, kind of tucked behind that front paw there. Um, you're just gonna see it peeking in, in between his legs a little bit. There's the line of the back, here's the knee of the back paw, and there's our little foot. And next we're ready for the tail. I like a nice fluffy tail to match the fluffy ears. And for this dog, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bow on its ear. If you don't wanna do a bow, you can do something different like a flower or even a birthday party hat. I always like to add little details, but you can make them your own. Okay, I'm gonna clean up my canvas a little bit, erase behind my bow. And then I'm putting the little ends of the bow on, cleaning up a little bit. And now we're gonna be ready for our Sharpie. I like to Sharpie all the pencil lines just because it gives us a nice, clean, solid boundary for all of our colors to go when we start painting. Also, um, acrylic paint erases pencil. So if you are working with acrylic paint and you start painting over your pencil lines, they might erase and you will not be able to see your dog. So that's why I like to Sharpie and make sure that everything is nice and clean. All right, we're ready for paint. I'm going to start with the background. The floor that the dog is sitting on, I'm making a nice light blue with blue and white. But again, this can be any color that you like. Um, if you like pink, you could mix some red and white together. If you like green, you could do blue and yellow. So any any color that you want to do for your background, you can customize this painting as you like. All right, so now I am finishing up the background. Make sure you get into all these little ins and outs. I know there's a couple tricky parts on my painting around the tail area. If you want to switch to a smaller brush to get into these teeny tiny little spaces, feel free to do that. The next thing I'm gonna be doing is working on my wall color. Um, but before I can start with the wall color, I need to wash off my brush and wipe it off on my paper towel. Make sure that you always have a nice, clean, dry brush before starting with a new color. Now, my background wall is going to be yellow, and yellow is a very thin color, so I like to add a little bit of white just to make it thicker, and I like the consistency a little better. It also brightens it up a bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill in my yellow wall. And again, make sure you get into all these teeny tiny little spots in between the fluffy tail and the fluffy ear. And after you're done with the background, 
wall, we are gonna be ready to start on our puppy. So again, clean off your brush, wipe it off on your paper towel, and we will be ready to start with our browns. Now remember, we do have two browns on our palette today. We have Burnt Sienna, which is the warm brown, and that's what I'm gonna start with. The other is Burnt Umber, and that's a little darker. So we're gonna start with the legs and most of the body. So all the way up to the dog's neck and down these front paws. This is gonna be the Burnt Sienna, the warm brown. Now once you're done filling in these front two legs, I, um, we will be ready to put a little bit of this color on the back. As you're working, um, this brown color is a little thick, so it goes on really nice and smooth. All right, so we're gonna fill in this little bit on the back. This tiny little piece of the dog's back. And then we're gonna mix Burnt Sienna with some white. I like to change up the color a little bit just so that um, things are different colors and they stand out a little bit more. So the back paw is gonna be this lighter version of the Burnt Sienna. So I'm gonna use this for both back paws. And after I'm done with that, I'm gonna wipe off my brush a little bit on my paper towel and we're going to go back to the burnt sienna without the white so just the original burnt sienna and we're going to fill in both sides of the snout so it's going to be around the eyes and you can switch to a smaller brush if you need to to get close to the eye and around the bow All right, again, we are gonna work with a lighter version of the Burnt Sienna. We're gonna add more white to the Burnt Sienna and make an, a third version of this brown where it's a very, very light version. It's kind of like a creamy, pinky, peachy color. And we're gonna use this for the dog's belly. We're also gonna use this lighter version of the Burnt Sienna for down the snout and around the mouth. And also, do not forget to do that little chin. Now, it's okay if you cover up your Sharpie lines. We can go back later and do some black outlines when the paint is dry. So don't worry if you're covering up some of your Sharpie lines. Now we're gonna wipe off our brush again, and we are ready for our Burnt Umber. We're gonna use the darker shade of brown. This is the Burnt Umber. And we're gonna fill in the puppy's ears. Again, if you wanna work with a smaller brush for this part, you can. Um, I know sometimes those little fluffy parts of the ear can be a little tricky with a bigger brush, so I usually use a smaller brush for fluffy ears. All right, so now we're finishing up the burnt umber on the fluffy ears and since we already have this color on our brush we're going to move on to the fluffy tail which is going to be the same color as our fluffy ears so we're going to fill that all the way in After we're done with the fluffy tail, we're gonna go ahead and wipe off our brush again. And I'm gonna do a second coat of this Burnt Sienna just because it smooths out the paint a little bit. If you wanna see less brush strokes, you can smooth it out with a second coat. It just makes it a nice solid color. All right, now I'm making a second version of the Burnt Umber. It's a lighter version. So we're gonna take some Burnt Umber, which is the darker brown, mix it with some white. And I'm gonna use that to fill in the back leg that is close to the tail. 
And now that we're done with our dog's body, we're ready to move on to the bow. The bow could be any color that you want, but I'm making mine green. So to make mine green, I'm mixing some yellow and blue, and I like my green to be a little minty. So I'm gonna add a little bit of white and fill in my bow just like this. Once you're done with the bow, you're gonna wipe off your brush and we're gonna put on the puppy's paws. I'm using black to put on the puppy's paws and the way I do my little animal paws is I do a nice big black circle at the base of the paw and then the toes are just little black circles or ovals. While I have the black on my brush, I'm gonna fill in the dog's nose. And uh, after the nose, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the eyes. So I'm gonna fill those in with black. Now this is looking like a puppy. We're gonna wipe that black off of our brush and I am just gonna go into the ears again with a second coat. This is totally optional, but a lot of times if you're seeing a lot of brush strokes or inconsistency in your color, you can do a second coat and it will just fill it all in and make it nice and smooth. Now that we're done with our puppy, we're ready to put some little flowers on our wallpaper on the back wall. The, you could do this with any color that you want. I am using a light blue because I feel like it matches the floor and brings that beautiful light blue color back onto the wall. And the way I do these little flowers is pretty easy. All I do is I make a little polka dot with the wrong end of my brush, the handle side of my brush. It makes a perfect little polka dot. And then I use the right side of one of my small brushes and I make all the little petals around each polka dot. And I slowly fill in the whole background with beautiful little flowers. All right, now I'm done with the background and I'm adding just a little bit of highlight and shadow. This is again an extra step that you do not have to do, but I always like to add a little highlight, a little white highlight around the edges of my dog. It makes the ears look a little fluffy and here I'm working on a shadow. You can use um, brown or maybe even some black or gray, just a darker color to put underneath the dog, make a little shadow. some little highlights. I also like to put little toes on my dog. That's what I'm doing right now with the white. I, this is one of my favorite tricks. I love putting little sparkles in my animal's eyes. And the way I do that is I just take the wrong end of one of my brushes, dip it in white paint and put it in each eye. And these little details make a big difference. So sometimes I'll use black and I'll put little eyelashes on. Another thing I like to do that you do not have to do, but it just, it cleans it up and makes it look really nice is putting a black outline around everything. You can do this with a very small brush and black paint, or what I'm doing here is using a Sharpie. Now, you cannot use the Sharpie on the painting until the paint is absolutely dry. It'll just ruin your Sharpie. So I am doing a nice clean black line on everything, but I know my painting is dry. And as I'm finishing up, I'm just putting the line of black on the back wall there, and it is done. So here's your finished project. Uh, the puppies look super cute. If you had fun painting with us today and want to share your results, go ahead and comment below. If you have any questions for us, we will get back to you. Also, if you would like to see more of these videos, you can hit the subscribe button and get notifications when we post new painting videos on our page uh, to visit our blog and our website. You can see the links below. Thank you so much for painting with Kate today, and we hope to see you again soon.